Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com. Welcome to Mastering On One Photo Raw 2018. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the adjustment brush that's found in On One Photo Raw 2018. The adjustment brush is considered a local adjustment because any adjustment you do with the brush can be applied to a very specific part of your image. And in On One Photo Raw 2018, there are two different local adjustment tools. If we look over at the left hand tool panel, you can see that it says local. And directly above that is one of the two tools. It's the adjustable gradient. And we'll talk about that in a future video. Directly above the adjustable gradient is the adjustment brush. Now, to turn on the adjustment brush, you could simply click on that little icon right there. Or, if we look over at the right-hand panel, you could see that the past several videos, we've been applying many different adjustment panels to our image, and they are under the Overall Settings tab, because those panels adjust everything. Now we're going to do local adjustments. So we could just click on this local adjustments tab. And when we do that, by default, the adjustment brush gets turned on. So you can see over here in the left-hand panel, the adjustment brush is now active. Now there's several different adjustments we can do. You can see as you look at the panel, there's everything from exposure, contrast, highlight, shadows, and color temp, and so on. For this specific image, there are three different things I'd like to do. This is an ocelot that is at the Buffalo Zoo. His name is Pedro, and ocelots are nocturnal animals, so Pedro's enclosure is relatively dark. And because it's dark, his irises are pretty dark, so I'd like to brighten up his irises. Also, because it was dark, I shot with a relatively high ISO, and ISO is 6400. So there's a lot of noise, particularly around Pedro's face. So you could see there's a lot of noise. So I'd like to soften that noise. The third thing I'd like to do is I'd like to add some sharpness or clarity to Pedro's face. He was walking toward me as I was shooting the picture, and I think his face is just a little bit soft. So I'd like to do those three different adjustments. Now as we look at the adjustment panel, you can see it's pretty typical for On One. Going across the top, we have these different uh, styles. And if I just click on one, say Lighten, you see, all it really does is it takes the exposure and turns it up. If I click on Darken, it brings exposure down. If I click on Vibrance, it brings Vibrance up. If I click on Detail, it brings Structure up. So really, those uh, preset styles just really kind of move the sliders. In the cases of these four, it just moved one slider. If we look at the drop down here, there's other things we could do. There's Contrast, so we could adjust Contrast with the brush. We could make the image cooler with the brush. We could darken the image. We already talked about that. Detail we talked. We could give it an HDR look. Uh, we could lighten it. But look at this next one, Magic Eye Fixer. That's kind of what I want to do. I want to kind of make his eyes look better. So I'm going to click on that. Now that's more commonly used with a human. So if you have a portrait you want to enhance the irises of your model, you would use Magic Eye Fixer. And also I'd like to just point out, there's also a toothbrush there. So if your model has, you know, not the most white teeth, you could use that to brighten their teeth. And there's all these other ones. But you do not have to use a style. You could just dial in specifically what you want and then just brush it in. Now I will use that preset style Magic Eye Fixer. And you can see it turned exposure and contrast up and it turns structure up. Now, if we look along the top, there are many brush attributes. The first is the mode. When I paint, I'm in paint in mode now, so I'll be applying these adjustments to the image when I'm in paint mo in mode. If I'm in paint out mode, I will be basically erasing those adjustments. So if I make an adjustment and I kind of go out of the line a little bit, I could then go to paint out mode and erase it from where I don't want it. Now for this adjustment, of course, we're using paint in. Now we have three different attributes for the brush itself. The actual size of the brush. You could adjust it by clicking on that little drop down and there's a little slider there to adjust the brush. 
Another way to do it, and the way that I usually do it, is I use the bracket keys on the keyboard. The right bracket key makes the brush larger, and the left bracket key makes the brush smaller. To the right of size is feather, the feathering of the brush. How much do you want the edges of the brush to be distinct? Uh, by default, it'll be at 100, so you have 100% feathering, so you have a very soft brush. And again, you could adjust this with this slider right here. So I bring feathering all the way down to zero or up to 100. Now another way you could adjust any of these three adjustments is if I hover over the name of the adjustment, in this case feather, and I click with the left mouse button and drag left or drag right, I'll be adjusting that specific adjustment. That's called a scrubby slider. So I'm adjusting feathering. Now for this image, and to adjust Pedro's eyes, I think I want feathering around 75, give or take. Next is opacity. Every brush stroke, how much do you want it to be, how strong do you want it? By default, it would be at 100, so you're going to be brushing 100% of the brush with every brush stroke. There are times, though, where you want to back off of that. So to use the scrubby slider, you could come in and bring it down from zero, which is actually nothing. You won't be brushing at all to 100, which is 100% of the effect, or these adjustments will be applied with every brush stroke. Now in this case, I'm going to keep opacity at 100. So the only real adjustment I'm doing of those two is feathering down to 76. Now, to the right of that is what they call a magic brush. That works very well if you have a high contrast area that has different tone and different color. And you want to apply the adjustment brush to that specific part compared to the part that's around it. Now if I turn it on you get a kind of a demonstration. It shows this tree and it shows someone brushing the tree, the, the uh, sky around the tree. So the adjustment will only affect the sky in this case and not the tree. And that comes in again very handy if you have that high contrast difference. In the case of Pedro we don't have that. So I don't think we need to use the, um, the perfect brush yet. Now in a future video, I will demonstrate the perfect brush when I have that situation. Um, as I mentioned, there is a lot in a brush. You could do a lot with it, and I really can't cover it all in one video, but we'll talk about it in future videos. Now to the right of that is a little gear. These are attributes, particularly if you're using some type of tablet, uh, like a Wacom tablet, which I'm not using currently. But you could turn on and off the perfect brush there and adjust some adjustments um, for that perfect brush. Or you could adjust for a Wacom tablet whether the pressure of your stylus adjusts size or the opacity. So then that's that. Now, let's just start brushing and see what we're going to do. So I'm going to adjust the brush with the left bracket key to make it smaller so that it just basically fits Pedro's iris. And I'm just going to start painting on on his iris like this. And you can see the effect that this specific preset style Magic Eye Fixer is doing to Pedro's iris. So I'm just going to make it smaller and get up above here. And like that. Now, to me that's way too bright and I don't like it. So you could just come in and just adjust these. Um, so I'm going to bring exposure down a little more. So you can see how it, how it affects that. So I don't want it that bright, right? And I want um, it a little more vibrant. So I'm going to turn vibrance up and I'm going to turn structure up a little more. So let's see, there's before and there's after. So you see it, it brightened his eyes considerably. Let's even bring it down just a touch. So there's before and there's after. So that looks pretty good. Now there's two more things I wanted to do. And one of those was I wanted to lessen the noise. And if I zoom in, if I go back to view mode over here, and I zoom in, you could see that there's a lot of noise in the image. So I want to lessen that noise. So we're going to go back to our brush. And what we need to do now is add another layer because this first adjustment is just his eyes. And we're going to do something different for that noise. So we're going to add a new layer and it gives us a brand new panel above our previous panel. And for this one, I want to bring the noise slider all the way down. So I'm going to be lessening the noise.
Now I'm going to get a large brush, super large one, so I'm going to use the bracket key to give me a nice big brush, and I'm going to feather it at 100 and keep opacity on 100, and I'm just going to, oops, I it, by default when you open these new layers, be aware of that, that it will have exposure at minus 1. Just reset it, so that's by double clicking on the name. So now exposure is at 0, but we still have our noise slider all the way down. So we are going to be able to um, get rid of the noise. Now I'm just going to go very quickly. I would expect that if I was doing this in real life, to post online or something, I would go much more carefully. Let's get a smaller brush and get above Pedro here. So basically, I, I just want to get it softer and less noise around his face. I want his face still to be the same because there really isn't a lot of noise on his face. So I applied it, I think, around his face. Now I could see exactly where I applied it if I display the mask. And to do that, go over here below the image to this little, sorry, this little rectangle with the circle in the middle. And if I click on that, you'll see that we have a view of the mask. And you can see wherever it's white is where I applied this adjustment, which is noise all the way down. So I could come in here now and kind of fix where I missed by just painting right on like that. Now there are two different views of the mask. I'm using the black and white view right now. If you'd like to see the other view, go up to the top mask menu down to view mode and you can see I'm in grayscale right now. If I click on red overlay you can see that wherever it is red is where the uh, effect is not being applied. So right now I'm removing noise everywhere where it isn't red. So We could come in here then and still paint and when you're done with viewing the mask just click on this little icon again and you'll turn that off. All right, so there is before and after, before, after. So I really softened the noise around Pedro's face. Now I mentioned I want to uh, bring up the structure in his face and make it look a little more detailed because as I mentioned, he was walking towards me and I think his face is a little soft. Now I could add a new layer, which I, I have to, to add this third brush, but I could do a little bit of a shortcut. I already painted around his face, and I, so I already have a mask. I could copy that mask. So to do that, see right here to the left of where it says adjustment, you could see the mask. I'll click on this. It'll open up the mask attributes, and you can see one of the commands is copy. So I'm going to copy that mask. So now that mask has been copied to the clipboard. Now I'm going to add a layer. I'm going to reset exposure. No, I'll leave exposure down so you could see what we're doing here. It's going to be down temporarily. So I'm going to open up the mask attributes by clicking on this little swatch. Now I'm going to paste this mask. Remember I copied it to the clipboard, so I'm going to paste it. Now you could see, because I have exposure down, I'll bring exposure down a little more, that it's affecting the part of the image where I don't want it to affect. I want to adjust his face. So I need to invert the mask. Now there's another command right here, invert. I'll click on that. And you can see now it's just affecting Pedro's face. But I don't want to adjust exposure. So I'm going to reset that. But I'm going to go down here to structure and I'm going to turn structure up. And you can see how structure turned up made his face look sharper. So that is very easy to do when you copy the mask. Why paint over again? You could just do it very quickly. Now I turn structure up way too high because I always suspect that in the video, I don't know what resolution you're watching the video at. and You may not notice the noise or you may not notice how much I'm sharpening something or adding structure to something. So I kind of always overdo it. So with the local adjustment brush, I did three different adjustments. First of all is I brightened up Pedro's irises and I added a little structure to it and a little more vibrance to his, his irises. Then 
I lessened the noise around Pedro's face. And then finally, I added a third brush where I increased the structure, which added more detail to Pedro's face. Now, I did imply there's a lot you could do with the adjustment brush. And just opening up the mask attributes, you could see there's a lot of commands. Uh, there's luminosity. We could do a luminosity mask if you needed. You could view the mask very easily by clicking there, and it will give you the view that you have active. In this case, I had that red overlay view active. If I had the other view active, which is the grayscale view, then it would show you that. So you could turn it off and on by clicking there. Instead of clicking down here, it just does the same exact thing. So you have these different things. We did copy and paste. You could reset the mask if you screwed up and you just want to reset it. You could click there. And then there's different mask attributes, density, feather levels, and window. And I think we'll talk about those in another video. I think that's a little bit too much to uh, bite off and chew in one video. There's also color range. You could have your mask really be on a specific range of colors instead of, in this case, uh, the mask is like just allowing his face to get affected. And then beyond the mask itself, we have a lot more adjustments down here. We could paint with color and uh, other attributes that we'll get to in future videos. But I think this video gives you a good idea of what that local adjustment brush can do and how you could use it and some beginning ideas on what masks do and how to utilize masks. In the next video, we'll talk about the adjustable gradient. And again, we'll use masking and stuff with that video. And then down the line, we'll start working more and more with the adjustment brush and we'll do more and more with it. So you could really um, realize the full strength of the tool. Thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.